Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. Today is our second meeting. Yesterday we began our series on algebra word problems. As I mentioned yesterday, the first 50 or so problems that we'll do will be very simple, very straightforward. In other words, very easy algebra word problems. We did eight of them yesterday. We're going to pick up from number nine today. Let's get going. Number nine. What multiplied? What multiplied by A gives B. Now, as we said yesterday, easiest, simplest, quickest, most efficient method to deal with algebra problem is to first plug in numbers, see what logic, what method, what rationale applies when you convert it into an arithmetic problem, and the same logic, same method, same rationale will apply in the algebra problem. Algebra and arithmetic, they are one and the same. So, if you were to ask, if you were asked, what, what multiplied, what multiplied by, what multiplied by, say, what multiplied by 3 gives us 15, what would you say? What multiplied by 3 gives us 15? Answer, of course, is 5. 3 times, 3 times 5 is 15. The question is, how do we get 5? We got 5 by dividing 15 by 3. So the answer, of course, is B over A. The answer is B over A. If you wanted to do it more traditional method, if you want to do it in more classical method, more traditional method, and more academic method, you'll have to you'll show your work by saying what the word is our unknown, let's call it x. The question is what multiplied what multiplied by a gives, which is same as equals b. And we solve for x, you see? We solve for x by dividing both sides by a. And a goes out, and your x, the unknown quantity, is b over a, which is what we just said here. But it's more, it's a very straightforward question. We don't have to do all that work to figure it out. It's very simple. Let's do the next one, number 10. Number 10. Just give me one brief second. Okay, I'm, I'm still here. Not going away. There you go. Number 10. P is divided into two parts. P is divided into two parts. This is number 10. One part we are told, two parts. One part we are told is Q. Question is, what's the other? Again, let's convert this first into arithmetic problem by plugging in numbers. If you were told, for example, 50 is divided into two parts, and if we're told that one part is 15, well, if one part is 15, the other part must be 35, because 15 plus 35 is going to give us 50. Question is, how do we find 35? How did, how did we find 35? With the arithmetic problem, it's so simple that it just, it just takes a split second. We found 35 by subtracting 15 from 50. By subtracting 15, which is our Q, from 50. That's all it is. The answer is... Subtract Q, which is our 15, subtract Q from P. If P is divided into two parts and one part is Q, the other part must be P minus Q. Why? Because P plus, if one part, if one part is, if P is divided into two parts and if one part is Q, if one part is Q, the other part must be P minus Q, P minus Q. This must be the other part. Because when we add the two parts, the Q cancels out and we get the P. Because that's what P was. P, P was divided into two parts. P was divided into two parts. One part, we were told, was Q. What is the other part? The other part must be P minus Q. Because Q plus P minus Q is going to give us the P, the total, the grand total. Number 10. I will try my best. I will do my best not to explain too much. Because when you begin to explain too much in a simple problem, it gets, it gets to be quite annoying. Number 11. What is left over? What is left over when 2x is deducted from 3y? Again, 
here you don't have to, if you could if you wanted to make up the value of x and y individually and then do the problem or you can just make up the whole thing what is left over when make up some number for 2x just make up anything that you like for 2x uh, how about what is left over when 10 is deducted from from let's say 70 what is left over when 10 is deducted from 70 well, what is left over is 60 how do we find 60 60 would be 70 minus 10 so the answer is 70 which is our 3y minus 10 which is our 2x that's your answer what is left over is 3y minus 2x 3y minus 2x let's do the next one here number 12 what number let's do it on the top I don't like working at the very, very bottom number 12 What number is what number is A less than B? Again, make up a number. What number is five less than nine? Let's say. What number is five less than nine? The answer of course is what number is 5 less than 9 is 4. 4 is 5 less than 9. How do we find 4? We found 4 by doing 5 minus 9 minus 5 by subtracting 5 from the 9. That's exactly what we're going to do here. The answer to this algebra word problem is simply 9 minus 5 which is B minus A. Do you understand? That's all. Let's do the next one. Number 13. Number 13. Let's see what we have for 13. Maybe I don't have to erase the whole thing. Yes, we do need to erase the whole thing. What is the price of P pencil, P pencils at D dollars? dozen. We are told that it costs D dollars, D for dollars, D dollars per dozen. At that rate, if you have to pay D dollars per dozen, how much will P cost? Well, let's find out, shall we? We know, we know that one dozen, we know one dozen costs D dollars. So let's make a note here. Twelve of them, twelve cost D dollars. If 12 of them cost D dollars, that implies that 1 must cost 1 twelfth of that. 1 must cost 1 twelfth of that, whatever that amount is, 1 twelfth of that amount. In other words, if 12 costs 24 dollars, 1 will cost 2 dollars. If 12 costs 60 dollars, 1 will cost 60 divided by 12, 1 must cost 5 dollars, and so on and so forth. We're not interested in the price of one pencil, we want to find P pencil. Well, that's pretty straightforward. If 1 costs d over 12, 2 will cost 2 times d over 12. 5 will cost 5 times d over 12. 20 will cost 20 times d over 12. And therefore p will cost, that implies that p pencil should cost p times d over 12. Put a parenthesis around the whole thing, then put a dollar sign out sign. We can leave it like this, but it looks ugly. So let's put it in a nice way, which is d times p over 12. Why d times p? Even though here we have p times d, because the convention dictates, the tradition dictates in algebra, that whenever we have variable, the tradition dictates that we state our variable alphabetically, in alphabetical order. So d p times d becomes d p, d p over 12 dollars. Okay? It's always a good idea to honor the conventions. Number, number 14. What is the price of What is the price of, mind you, I want to make sure you understand, mind you, that this answer is not wrong. This answer is perfectly fine. This is perfectly correct answer. It just it doesn't look pretty. That's what it is. This looks more elegant. But as far as the answer itself is concerned, this is fine. This is the correct answer. This, is, this looks more pretty. It looks more elegant. What is the price of 10 cheeseburger if and cost 
if n of them cos d dots. Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. We are told that n of them cos three dollars. N cos three dollars. We are told that. Well, if n of them cos three dollars, that implies that one must cos one must cos three divided by n. In other words, if ten of them cos three dollars, one of them must cos three dollars divided by ten or thirty cents. If five cos three dollars, one must cos five divided by three divided by five dollars, and so on and so forth. We are not interested in the price of one cheeseburger, we want 10 of them, that's very straightforward. That in, that in turn implies, we can, we can continue writing here in the next line, or we can just multiply, or we can take this part here, that answer that we have here, and multiply this side by 10, multiply that side by 10, and we are done, this is our answer. Again, you could leave it like this, but it looks quite ugly, so we multiply it out, 3 times 10 is 30 over n dollars. 30 over n dollars. Let's go. Let's go to the next one. Number 15. Number 15. What is the price of A apples? What is the price of A apples if B cost B dollars? Let's find out, shall we? It's important that you watch from the very beginning, from, from problem number one, because I'm no longer plugging in numbers to show you how to do it arithmetically. We did that on the first day, one through eight. We're just going to pick up a little speed here, do you understand? We could solve this thing by plugging in numbers and figure out how to do it arithmetically and then translate our work into using, by using symbols, but we're not going to do that. We're not, we're not going to do it in a babyish way. We're just going to do it out logically. So we are told that B cos D dollars. B cos D dollars. Well, if B apples cos D dollars, that implies that one apple must cost B over B dollars, whatever that amount happens to be. And now we have the price of one apple. We're not going to buy one apples. We want to buy A apples. So if, again, if one apple costs D over B dollars, two apples will cost two times D over B, three apples will cost three times D over B, five will cost five times D over B, and therefore A apples will cost, A apples will cost, A apples will cost, A will cost, A times D over B dollars. Again, we can leave it like this, but it doesn't look pretty. So we're going to make it look pretty. We're going to present it in a more elegant way. More elegant way. A times D over B. And don't forget the units. Always must put the unit outside. Because without the unit, it has absolutely no meaning. I'll see you tomorrow. And when I say tomorrow, I mean we're going to pick up from the video that will say that will begin from problem number 16. Just look for them in sequence, wherever it ends. The first one was 1 through 8. This one happens to be. This one happens to be. 9 through 15. The next one, of course, will begin with 16, and I don't know where it's going to end. Bye now.